morning, everyone. As America ages and millions are faced with the need for assistance in the activities of daily life, people are realizing how important it is to find well-trained and caring workers to help them. Education. Without the education, we can't do a thing. Is a yes. Often called direct care workers, they work directly with the consumer to maintain a life of independent choice and dignity. But the need for direct care is growing dramatically, and there are fewer and fewer workers. The pay is low, there are few or no benefits, no vacation or sick time, and limited opportunities for advancement. Getting better health care and getting better recognition and better retention rates by changing the perception of our profession. Empowering ourselves, the first national conference of state and local direct care worker associations was sponsored by the Direct Care Alliance and held in Iowa in August 2007. I think everybody here came with the idea that they want to get people involved, they want to get their coworkers. Participants from 18 states came together to organize. They shared their stories and talked about how they can join forces to change the future. When I was in high school, my mom had a very severe stroke. And being a minority direct care worker, we did not have the finances to, for insurance, or to even the, the knowledge and know-how of how to place mother in a nursing home or a sex living facility. So by default, I had to become a direct care worker. I started when my daughter was a baby, and I was considerably younger. And um, it was just the work. I loved the work. I loved, loved the patients and the clients. And, you know, you're supposed to not bring your work home with you, but it sort of melds in with my whole life. You know, um, my clients become a part of my life, and it doesn't just shut off at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock whenever I get out of work. I worked at a factory in, in Dubuque, Iowa, and it seemed like with my young family, I was constantly getting laid off. Uh, never be able to get ahead. I get into uh, the job service uh, appointment and she said, how would you like to be a CNA? There's a lot of jobs for that and layoff rarely happens. I said, well, that sounds interesting. I said, what is it? So she tried to tell me about it and uh, I went to a course in, in our city. Uh, it was just a 20 hour, you know, see if you like it type situation. And uh, she said, you're a natural. So I went to the full course, the 75-hour course, and that was 17 and a half years ago. My life has changed immensely since I took on the role of caregiver. I'm completely tied down 24-7, and you don't understand that role until you've actually had to live it. Uh, but uh, I would not have it any other way because Kelly would not survive in an institution. She just wouldn't. And with, with me and, and her being in my home, she's flourished and there are things she does that she was unable to do before, even when she was with her parents or her mother. And uh, I just can't think of any other way to, to live than what we're living now. I, I think everyone has innately some specific skill or something that drives them or helps them to connect with things in life. Uh, the thing that does it for me is I'm definitely a people person. I had one job that wasn't a people person. I quit it after six months. I was in a cubicle banding boxes, and it drove me nuts. I need to be able to relate. I need to be able to, to give it myself. Um, I've created a possibility for myself in life that says I'm service. I'm extraordinary service, and that's where I live from e each day. I bring a lot of humor into the workplace. Uh, I guess I, I learn who I can use humor on, who I can't use humor on. Uh, but that, that's what keeps me going. I get that smile in the morning, that chuckle. If I make somebody feel good for 10 minutes that they don't need that pain pill right now, that I feel I did my job for the day. I love to see the sparkle in the client's eye when you've done something for them that they, maybe they can't acknowledge to you in their voice, but you know they need it. And when you do it for them, you see this huge smile and that sparkle in their eye. I think the best part of it is when they grab your hand with that thankful grab and the tear rolls from their eye. And they can't say thank you, but you know that it means thank you.
That's my passion. When the legislature, the president, the vice president, when the pope, anybody needs health care services, who are you going to ask? Would you want the mechanic to be there? Would you want the butcher man in the grocery store to be there? They wouldn't know what to do. You, um, would you want somebody that had had a career of driving a race car, give you your medications, uh, give you a bath, uh, feed you? Uh, and a lot of family members, that's exactly what they're doing. They have no idea what it entails. And unless this country as a whole uh, gathers together to help the healthcare field, we're in big trouble. I work for um, an agency um, with folks with developmental disabilities and um, just find that um, because I'm at kind of the bottom of the totem pole that I, I've often found that people consider us to be a dime a dozen. And um, I've been in the field for a very long time and have chosen to be in this field because of the passion that I have for the work that I do and feel like I am a professional and I deserve respect and I deserve um, the dignity that I give to myself. Other folks should experience that same dignity for the work that they do. I don't work for an agency. I'm employed um, by, uh, directly by the consumers that I work for, so I don't receive any benefits. Um, and, you know, I, I don't receive a livable no. wage. <laughs> I don't, flat out, I don't. <laughs> I came to work one day and I was given 21 patients to take care of. And I remember going, leaving the job, crying all the way home because there was no way for me to take care of 21 patients. It, and, and, and underline, you know, when you stop weeping about it, what are you going to do about it? And, uh, and it came to me that we need to become more organized so that we can address the problems of staffing so that um, patients get the quality of care that they deserve. And that's, that's mainly what I'm talking about because the patient care, patient to patient care giver ratio is too high. It's too high because staffing is low. Staffing is low because the retention rate is low. So you start with that bottom rung. This, the nursing assistant. Make him feel wanted, make him feel needed, he will stay there, he will work for 30 years. But if you mistreat him, if you disrespect him, they will leave. What do we need, really need to do our jobs better? It goes beyond wages, I think. It goes beyond benefits, I think. I think the uh, acknowledgement that the work that we do is absolutely necessary. If they find it in their hearts, and I think one day when they get a little older, they will, that the work is a work, and it's a specialized work that everybody can't do, most people don't want to do, and a lot of people really don't know how to do. I think direct care work is an, it's an ever-evolving profession. I've been in the, um field a short time and realize that there is a lot of um, things that we could improve on, health care benefits, um, training, education, and it's just neat to see that it's, they have those same problems in every state and that we're all working for the same goal. We're going to have to learn to legislate. We're going to have to learn to put people in positions that help us. We're going to have to lobby. We're going to have to publicize what we do. And we have to make sure that we also put ourselves in a, a, a pose that's respectful, one that shows us for what we truly do, not for the image that was created for us in the past. You have to become politically active because every single step of the way is political in this field. And before, I wasn't. I was, I was oh, anti-political, I hated politics, but I've come to learn that everything is politically motivated and you've got to become active. If you want change, you have to be there. You have to be there to vote, you have to be there to caucus, you have to be there to make things change in the laws. If you want, the, if you want change, you've got to make the change happen.